Good morning, everyone. I, I think we are starting to deal with um, summer construction, so people are trying to adjust their time in, in getting here. So I, I, we're almost all here, but I think we may have a, a couple more. So we are going to slow roll our agenda to make sure that we have everyone here by the time we start. So I will say good morning and welcome everyone to the Will County Board meeting for April 20th, 2023. I will call this meeting to order. Uh, County Board Member Mitchell, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and introduce the clergy? I pledge allegiance to the flag. I would like to introduce to you today Vaughn Sanders, who is an inspiring community leader as a pastor of First Baptist Church of Bolingbrook, located at 314 East Briarcliff Road, a leadership development coach, a podcaster, and a devoted husband and father. His chief aim is to bring joy, hope, and fulfillment to people's lives. Pastor Vaughn Sanders. Good morning. What an honor it is to be with you here this morning. Won't you bow with me as we approach the throne of grace? Gracious Heavenly Father, we come before you today with humble hearts and grateful spirits, seeking your wisdom and guidance as we gather for this county board meeting. We ask that you bless this meeting with your presence and give us the strength and courage to make decisions that honor you and benefit the people that we serve. We ask that you bless our county and its leaders with your divine protection and guidance. May we work together to create a community that is safe, prosperous, and just for all its members. We pray for unity and cooperation among our leaders and citizens that we may work together for the greater good. We ask for your wisdom and discernment as we discuss the important matters that affect our county. May we listen to one another with open hearts and minds, seeking to understand each other's perspectives and work together to find solutions that reflect your love and your grace. We ask that you bless our county's infrastructure, businesses, and schools, that we may thrive and bring prosperity to all those who call this place home. We pray for those who are struggling, that, that they may find hope and healing through your love and mercy. We also ask that for your protection over our first responders, healthcare workers, and all those who serve our county. May they be filled with your strength and compassion as they carry out their duties, and may they feel the presence of your presence with them always. And finally, we ask that you are a blessing on each and every one of us as we go about our daily lives. May we seek to honor you in all that we do, and may your light shine through us to bless others. We offer this prayer in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Madam Clerk, will you please call the roll? Balich? Here. Trainier? Present. Dean Schlotman? Here. Van Dyne? Present. Pretzel? Here. Butler? Here. Newquist? Here. Richmond? Here. Parker? Here. Williams? Here. Diaz? Winfrey? Coleman? Logan? Freeman? Yeah. Revis? Present. Mitchell? Here. Ortiz? Present. Berkowitz? Here. Mueller? Here. Costa? Here. Ogala? Eighteen present. We have a quorum. I need a motion to place on file the certificate of publication. 
Moved by Mitchell, seconded by Trenere. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Balich. Yes. Trenere. Present. Yes. Dean Schlotman. Yes. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. Yes. Butler. Yes. Newquist. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Parker. Yes. Williams. Yes. Logan. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Revis. Yes. Mitchell. Yes. Ortiz. Yes. Berkowitz. Yes. Mueller. Costa? Yes. 18 affirmative. 18 affirmative. The motion carries. I need a motion to approve the meeting minutes for the March 16th, 2023 board meeting. Motion, motion by Revis. Second, seconded by Parker. Second. Previous roll call by okay. Balage. Seconded by Dean Schlamman. Thank you. Uh, We'd like to add Natalie Coleman to the records. Would you like to be a yes on the Will County uh, board meeting minutes? Yes. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Madam Clerk, will you please acknowledge the elected officials and media present today? Um, this morning we have County Executive Jennifer Bertino Tarrant, County Clerk Lauren Staley Ferry, Auditor Duffy Blackburn, Recorder of Deeds Karen Stuckel, and Treasurer Tim Brophy. And we have no media here yet. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to move on to proclamations and honorary resolutions. Uh, there was going to be a presentation from ComEd for energy efficient cost saving, but we are going to um, move that to May. Do I need a motion? To, it's a proclamation. Do I need a motion to move that? Yes? Okay. Can I get a motion to uh, take that off the agenda? No. Motion by Mueller. Seconded by Coleman. Is there a previous? Previous. Previous Mitchell. Seconded by Dean Schlotman. All in favor? Any opposed? The motion carries. At this time, we are uh, happy to be recognizing our EMA volunteers. And I will welcome our executive director, there you are, Allison Anderson, to the podium. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this is a huge honor for everyone in our agency, and I hope for the County of Will. I wish I could take a few minutes to show and demonstrate the impact each one of our individual volunteers has. I simply don't have enough time. But if you have a few minutes, I'd like to share a quick story, and hopefully you can feel the impact that they give back to our community. It's an unusually warm day on a Sunday in October, you and your family have been doing yard work all day. The kids have been playing with the neighbors for much of the afternoon. The sun starts to set and you realize you have to figure out something to do for dinner and you have to get the kids ready for school tomorrow. You tell your spouse, I'm gonna fire up the grill. If you can get the kids ready for dinner. Your spouse grabs your first kid, your second kid, but you can't find your third. Lucas, Lucas has autism and he has limited verbal skills. He's seven, but he's still in diapers and he tends to keep to himself, except around his neighbors and his family. The whole family begins to look for Lucas, but he's nowhere to be found. A flood of emotions come barreling down and suddenly your heart drops. Lucas is missing. You quickly call 911 to report this. An officer arrives within minutes. The officer quickly assesses the situation and realizes the magnitude. There are retention ponds, which seem to be everywhere in the subdivision, along with farm fields and some wooded areas nearby. The sun is quickly setting, and there's simply not enough officers to look everywhere. You realize this too. On top of Lucas's disability, the situation starts to weigh on you. You suddenly want as many people as possible to be looking for Lucas. The officer requests Will County EMA to assist. The duty officer pages out for our command van, our light trucks, the drones, and our search and rescue team. Within 45 minutes or so, all assets are in place and a briefing with local law enforcement starts to happen on the high probability of the search of finding Lucas. Teams are sent out with their assignments and, are, and the search area is lit up. Drones are in the air as well. You, along with your spouse, are in our command band with law enforcement, trying to help figure out where your child can be. Every minute seems to feel like hours and the worry grows deeper. A radio call comes in. We found him, 
We found Lucas. He's safe. This is just one of the hundreds of examples of what our volunteers do and train for on a regular basis. A few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of calling every single one of our volunteers who's receiving this award today. And not one of them told me it was about the time that they give. It's about the mission. Um, earlier this year, I talked to you about what our volunteers have contributed. The 15 members that are gonna come in front of you today have contributed almost 50% of the time to our agency last year. And I'm very pleased to um, honor them today with that. So without further ado, if you could please join me in presenting the President's Service Award to our amazing volunteers. Um, I would like, is Judy coming? She's not here yet, I'm sorry. <laughs> So I will be going um, from our 100, our lowest amount that the volunteers received was 100 hours to qualify for this award up to 250. So we're going to start and grow as we present each award. Um, so first is John Scorey with 100 hours. Brian Kramer with 110 hours. <laughs> Dan Niemeyer with 120 hours. Mike McGowan for 145 hours. Tim Mills with 149 hours. Mike Durand with 175 hours. Thanks, Mike. Jeff Marvin with 179 hours. Jonathan Nelson with 187 hours. Adam Jomont with 193 hours. Brent Oots with 196 hours. Thank you. Sandra Struder with 100 or 204 hours. Bill Beaton with 226 hours. <laughs> Jennifer, this is my dad. <laughs> this is my dad, everyone. <laughs> uh, the next two are silver. Um, Silver recipients. Oh, wait, did I forget some Monday? Oh, Tracy, I'm so sorry. I skipped right over Tracy. Um, Tracy Kerner with 136 hours. I'm sorry, Tracy. <laughs> uh, 
The last two have qualified for the silver award, uh, which is over the 200 and uh, 225 hour, or I'm sorry, 250 hour mark. Um, the first one on our list is Mr. Alan Matza. Thank you, Alan. <laughs> and last but not least, uh, Mr. Art Bidmar with 313 hours. Not only is Art receiving this, but next week he's also receiving the Governor's uh, Volunteer Service Award as well. We simply could not do what we do at EMA without our outstanding volunteers. So thank you all for your continued support and thank you to all of our amazing volunteers. It looks like you've got a packed house so we're gonna take them all downstairs afterwards. <laughs> words while they line up for their their picture um, I, I think we all know here we have an exceptional EMA staff um, but it, it's even made even greater by the volunteer service that we have here we know that we are a solid community that comes together in times of needs and it's because of volunteers like these folks here so thank you very much I just want to say I just want to say as a, as a, I was working in uh, Will Township and we had a tornado come through. I was working in Will Township in the road district and we had a tornado come through and EMA came out and helped and it was truly amazing and uh, the skill you guys have, the, the, the uh, practices you have in place to make things happen when there's an absolute disaster going on is so truly appreciated by those of us who are left in the middle of a tornado not sure what to do because everything was handled really well and I want to thank you for that. Thank you so much. Um, Madam Clerk, can we please add uh, County Board Member Diaz and Ogala to the, the rules? Yes. Next, we are going to have County Board Member Meta Mueller to the podium, as well as Anthony Marzano to recognize National Public Safety Telecommuters Week. Telecommunicators Week. Oh, there you are. Good morning, everyone. Uh, this morning, we are recognizing National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week, which is uh, April 9th to 15th, 2023. Whereas in 1991, the United States Congress issued a formal proclama proclamation designating the second full week of April National Public Safety Telecommunicator Week. And whereas emergencies may occur at any time requiring prompt response of police officers, firefighters, and emergency medical services personnel for the protection of lives and property. 
and whereas the success and safety of our first responders is dependent upon the quality and accuracy of information obtained from citizens who contact the Joliet, Laraway, and Western Will County Communication Centers, and whereas public safety telecommunicators are the first and most critical contact our citizens have with emergency services, and whereas Will County public safety telecommunicators handled over 304,000 911 emergency calls in 2022, whether by telephone, text message, or uh, TDD slash TTY, and whereas public safety telecommunicators from the Will County 911 system have contributed substantially to the apprehension of criminals, suppression of fires, and treatment of patients, leading to better quality of life for the residents and visitors of Will County, and whereas public safety telecommunicators serve with compassion, understanding, and professionalism when called upon, when called upon in a citizen's time of need. Now herefore be it proclaimed that the Will County Board declares the week of April 9th to 15th, 2023 as National Public Safety Telecommunicators Week in Will County in honor of the men and women whose diligence and professionalism keep our county and our citizens safe. Dated this 20th day of April, signed by Jennifer Bertino Tarrant and attested to by Lauren Staley Ferry, and I so move. We have a motion by uh, Mueller, seconded by O'Gala. Previous roll call by Trenere, seconded by Richmond. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Well, do you want to say anything? Okay. They're going to take some. Now we're going to take some pictures. The, the only thing I would say is thank you from all the telecommunicators who are uh, who are behind the screens 24-7 trying to protect everyone. We're, we're often... Uh, kind of the last to be thought of in the recognition, so we appreciate your taking the opportunity to recognize us today. You're welcome. Thank you for all you guys do. Come on. Come on. At this time, we're going to have County Board Member Pretzel, who will read uh, our Earth Day recognition, our uh, proclamation. Sorry. Thank you. Proclamation recognizing April 22nd, 2023 as Earth Day. Whereas the first Earth Day was held on April 22nd, 1970, and it was attended by 20 million Americans to bring attention for a healthy, sustainable environment. And whereas the clean air clean water, and endangered species acts were created in response to the first Earth Day, as well as the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency, and whereas more than 1 billion people in 192 countries now participate in Earth Day activities each year, making it the largest civic observance in the world, and whereas the theme for Earth Day 2023 is Invest in Our Planet, which highlights the importance of dedicating our time, resources, and energy to environmental issues. And whereas the five pillars of Invest in Our Planet are plant trees, reduce plastic consumption, participate in advocacy, vote earth, and sustainable fashion. And whereas we must invest in our planet, not just because we care about the natural world, but because we live in it. And everyone needs a healthy earth to support our jobs, livelihoods, health, and survival and happiness. Now therefore be resolved that the Will County Board and the Will County Executive hereby proclaim April 22nd, 2023 as Earth Day throughout Will County. Be it further resolved that the Will County Board and the Will County Executive encourage all of its citizens, businesses, and institutions to celebrate Earth Day and to help protect and restore our planet. Dated this 20th day of April, 2023, signed by Will County Executive Jennifer Bertino Tarrant, and attested by Lauren Staley Ferry, Will County Clerk, and I so move. Motion by Pretzel, seconded by Freeman. Peevish roll call by Ortiz, seconded by Mitchell. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And then finally today, we have County Board Member Parker, 
who will recognize mm -hmm. National Fair Housing Month, and I believe uh, we have a Robert Kroger here today from Prairie State Legal as well. So if you'd like to join us down here, thank you very much. <clears throat> All right, today we are recognizing April 2023 as National Fair Housing Month. Whereas Will County finds that decent and safe housing is part of the American dream and a goal of Illinois residents, and whereas individ individuals in the state of Illinois have the right to choose where to live without discrimination based on race, color, religion, age, 40 and over, sex, including sexual harassment and pregnancy, familial status, marital status, national origin, ancestry, disability, sexual orientation, gender identity, military status, unfavorable military discharge, and order of protection status. And whereas acts of housing discrimination and barriers to equal housing opportunity are repugnant to a common sense of decency and fairness, and whereas federal and state laws affirm the right of every person to equal housing opportunities, and whereas fair housing is a positive community goal, good, and whereas economic stability, community health, and human relations in all communities and the state of Illinois are improved by diversity and integration, <clears throat> and whereas stable, integrated, and balanced residential patterns are threatened by discriminatory acts and unlawful housing practices that result in segregation of residents and opportunities in our region, and whereas the talents of grassroots and nonprofit organizations, housing service providers, financial institutions, elected officials, state agencies, and others must be combined to promote and preserve integration of fair housing and equal opportunity. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that the Will County Board and the Will County Executive do hereby recognize the month of April as National Fair Housing Month and to establish Will County as an open and inclusive community committed to fair housing and to promote appropriate activities to, provide, to private and public entities intended to provide or advocate for integration and equal housing opportunities for all residents and prospective residents of Will County. Dated this 20th day of April, 2023, signed by Jennifer Bertino Tarrant, Will County Executive, and attested by Lauren, Lauren Staley Ferry, Will County Clerk. Thank you. Oh, and I so move. Mo Moved by Parker, seconded by Mueller. Previous roll call by Freeman, seconded by Trenier. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Congratulations. Yes, please. Uh, as she introduced me, I'm Robert Kroger. I'm a staff attorney over at Prairie State Legal Services. Um, if you're not familiar, which I'm sure most of you are, uh, we provide pro bono legal work to low-income clients who wouldn't typically be able to afford an attorney. Um, I just want to thank the county board who funded uh, Prairie State with CD, CDBG COVID relief. Um, that was funds that helped us help uh, people who were anticipating evictions. Um, we're now working with community development staff in court with their eviction, eviction diversion program, uh, which was also funded by the county. Um, through that work, we do encounter cases of housing discrimination, um, and, but that gives us an opportunity to both educate tenants and landlords on what you can and cannot do within the um, frame of the law. Um, this is a particularly important year when the source of income was added, when source of income is now protected by law for fair housing. Um, so on behalf of Prairie State, I just want to thank the county board and executive for your commitment and for recognizing this is Fair Housing Month. At this time, we're going to move to public comments for agenda items only. Do we have any public comments for today's agenda items? Okay. What is that? They'll come up. So there's a, 
Yes, ma'am. Uh, this is the point. If, uh, if this is for ag agenda items, this is when you, you speak now. Yep. Nicole. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, they'll, we do have the end of the agenda as well that they'll have opportunity. At what point? If, if someone wants to make a motion to suspend the agenda, we can do that. Yeah. All right. Well, we can't do it now. Not, not yet. <laughs> At that time. Oh, oh, she is here. Yay. Is it all okay? Yeah. Okay. It's a good problem. Hello. Uh, public comments are uh, limited to three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> Excuse me. Well, good morning. Um, I want to thank you for this opportunity to speak with you this morning. Um, let me catch my breath real quick. I just ran. It was like a mile park to get parking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I appreciate that very much. Um, okay. So I am Nikki Perry, uh, the founder and owner of 515 Fitness. For those of you that don't know what we do, we provide mental health therapy. Um, we combine professional psychological counseling with physical movement in the same session. Our innovative methods of mental health treatment are backed by research and neuroscience experts with PhDs on our staff. Excuse me. <laughs> um, 515 is in its 10th year of operation. Our name can sometimes be misleading. In fact, 515 in numbers literally stands for a mental awakening and a time to stand up and take charge of your life. And this is what we help our clients to do. We help them to thrive and not just survive. I am a licensed clinical professional counselor. I have my master's in counseling, a bachelor's in psychology, and I'm a certified personal trainer and registered yoga teacher. With over 25 years in uh, of experience working in the field of mental health, I would like to thank you and commend you for hiring the consulting firm to help determine how the federal grant should be awarded in our county. It helps us, uh, it helps us assure mediocrity. As the singular agency in District 1 initially notified that we would help or that we would receive partial funding, we are proud to help you fulfill the mission of spreading these financial resources to our resources to all these districts. And as two of the largest and most underserved districts in the county, I can confirm to you this morning that there are a lot of people in need that will benefit from this grant. We are currently working with 200 clients, employ 22 counselors and staff. We operate three facilities and we have valuable strategic alliances with our, within our field of mental health professionals that we work with in Congress to counsel individuals with our groundbreaking method of combining professional mental health counseling with movement. I implore you from my heart to help us continue our mission and, and yours to help serve those in District 1 in need of mental health services to take charge of their lives and live as productive, healthy residents of our community. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else for today's agenda items? Hello and welcome. If you could just state your name for us. Yes, my name is Boise Walker, and I want to speak on the agenda item for the Public Work and Transportation Committee. It's item one, the public hearing regarding amending WC Code of Ordinance Chapter 70.12, this is an amendment looking to increase or alter the size and weight limits of the trucks and the loads that's currently going down Brick Street. I am uh, asking that we consider this highly as the current limits of the bricks and the restrictions that are currently set in place do not align with the truck loads that are being recommended to be able be allowed to come down the street. 
or that road. So thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? All right. Seeing no more public comment, we are going to move on to old business. All, all resolutions and ordinance from the March 16th, 2023 board meeting have been signed and returned. There's no new business, so I'm going to move on to land use and development. Chair Pretzel. Open public land use cases motion by Mueller seconded by uh, Freeman we take, madam clerk please call the roll Balich yes. Trainier yes. Dean Schlotman yes. Van Dyne yes. Pretzel yes Butler yes. Newquist yes. Richmond yes. Parker yes. Williams yes. Diaz yes. Coleman yes. Logan yes. Freeman Revis? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Berkowitz? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Costa? Yes. Ogala? Yes. 21 affirmative. We are now in public hearing. Please be advised absolutely no new evidence or information will be allowed once this land use public hearing is closed. Do we have any comments from the public for the public hearing? Can I get a motion to close the public hearing? I make that motion. Motion by Trenere, seconded by Pretzel. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. We do previous? Oh. Yeah. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Balich. Yes. Trenere. Yes. Dean Schlotman. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. Yes. Butler. Newquist, yes. Richmond, yes. Parker, yes. Williams, yes. Diaz, yes. Coleman, yes. Logan, yes. Freeman, yes. Revis, yes. Mitchell, yes. Ortiz, yes. Berkowitz, yes. Mueller, yes. Costa, yes. Ogala. Yes. 20 for me, the public hearing is now closed. <clears throat> Chair Pretzel. Okay, first on the agenda. Ordinance amending the Will County, Illinois zoning as amended for zoning case ZC22080. Robert J. Mandera and Susan E. Mandera, owner of record, Jose Oscar Herrera, agent requesting M22036 map amendment from A1 to R2 in Homer Glen, Illinois, County Board District Number 4. Motion by Second, Motion by Pretzel, seconded by uh, Balich. Did you see? He so, we moved. Yeah, I still move. Okay, yeah, my thoughts. Pretzel seconded by Balage. The previous roll call by Ogala. Seconded by Mueller. All in favor? Aye. Are any opposed? Motion carries. Number two, ordinance amending the Will County, Illinois zoning as amended zoning case ZC22090. Lauren DeMeo, owner of record, requesting zoning map amendment from A1 to E1. On Stunkel Road, Frankfort, Illinois, County Board District Number Three, and I so move. Motion by Pretzel, seconded by Newquist. Previous, Previous roll call by Berkowitz, seconded by Balich. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Under resolutions number one twenty three nine eight, correcting a Scribner's error on zoning case two two zero six six. Trail Farms Partnerships, owner of record, requesting SUP for Solar Farm, and I so move. Motion by Pretzel. Second. Seconded by Mueller. Previous, Previous roll call by Trenere. Second. Seconded by Costa. I'll, oh, um, County Board Member Dean Schlotman, would you like to be a yes on that? Okay. Seconded by Costa. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The next Land Use and Development Committee meeting is scheduled for May 9th, 2023 at 10 30 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. County Board Member Richmond Finance Committee. Good morning Madam Executive. Uh, I have three items. Uh, first one is resolution 23-99 increase recorder of deeds fees for the rental housing support program uh, state surcharge and I so move. Motion by Richmond. Seconded by Newquist. Previous, ro previous roll call by Trenere. Second, Second by Logan. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
The second item is a resolution 23-100 authorizing the use of contingent funds to purchase the replacement I-series for the existing payroll system. And I so move. Motion by Richmond, seconded by Mueller. Previous, Previous roll call by Logan, seconded by Trenere. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. The third item is resolution 23-101 authorizing the use of contingent funds for renewal of Cisco SmartNet maintenance at the Will County Courthouse, and I so move. Motion by Richmond, Previous seconded Revis. by COSA. Previous roll call by Revis. Second, Second by seconded by Logan. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, lastly, is our next uh, Finance Committee meeting is scheduled for May 2nd, 2023 at 11 o'clock. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. Chair Van Dyne, uh, Public Works and Transportation. Thank you and good morning, Madam Chair, and uh, good morning to everyone in attendance. It's so nice to see so much participation this morning. Uh, I would like to start with making a motion to open a public hearing amending the Chapter 70.12 LCO routes. Uh, motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Pretzel. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Balich? Yes. Trainier? Dean Schlotman? Yes. Van Dyne? Yes. Pretzel? Yes. Butler? Yes. Newquist? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Parker? Yes. Williams? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Coleman? Yes. Logan? Yes. Freeman? Yes. Revis? Yes. Mitchell? Yes. Ortiz? Yes. Berkowitz? Yes. Mueller? Yes. Costa? Yes. Ogawa? Okay. So if you're asking a substantive question about um, this particular uh, request, you should ask it during public hearing. Okay. Uh, if, if it's an overall general policy question, then it can wait until after you come out of public hearing. Okay. It's more like a clarification. I just wanted to let everybody know that the, the woman who spoke during the first uh, public comment, she was referring to this uh, item number two, and she was opposing it. So that everybody knows she came here to oppose it. She doesn't want it. She says that it's not safe for the roads. So in case anybody was asking, that's where the constituents stand. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a motion to close the public hearing? Motion. Second. Mo Motion by Trenere, seconded by O'Gall. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Balich. Balich. Yes. Trainier. Yes. Dean Schlotman. Yes. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. Yes. Butler. Yes. Newquist. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Parker. Yes. Williams. Yes. Diaz. Yes. Coleman. Yes. Logan. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Revis. Yes. Mitchell. Yes. Ortiz. Berkowitz, yes. Mueller, yes. Costa, yes. Ogala. Yes. 21, affirmative. 21 affirmative. The public hearing is now closed. <laughs> Chair Van Dyne. Thank you. Uh, the Public Works and Transportation Committee has 10 items to consider this morning, starting with uh, number two on our agenda, Resolution 23-102, amending the Will County Code and or Ordinances, Chapter 70.12, Size and Weight Limits, Stations. Uh, LCO, which stands for Limited Continuous Operation Routes. I would like to make the motion. Motion by Van Dyne. I'd like to have oh, yeah. A motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Ogala. Discussion, County Board Member Diaz. As I said last night in our caucus, I am adamantly opposed to this. I feel it's very dangerous to be setting the precedent to allow a vehicle 10,000 pounds overweight going up over an old wooden bridge. It would be going, they would go down Raul Avenue, down Mills Road, up Briggs Street, which is all narrow roads. There are no um, 
curbs on any of these roads and then to get to I-80 going let me think, westbound, they'd have to go up over a wooden bridge that is not weighted for this limit. And I don't think we should vote for something and hope that IDOT says, oh, you know what? You can't allow the heavy vehicles to go over it. So I'm a hard no, and that is in my district, and my constituents also are not going to be happy with this. So I hope you stand with me and vote no. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Balich. No. Trainier. No. Dean Schlotman. No. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. No. Butler. No. Newquist. No. Richmond. No. Parker. No. Williams. No. Diaz. No. Coleman. No. Logan. No. Freeman. I'm going to be a yes. Revis. I'm no. Mitchell. No. Ortiz. No. Berkowitz. No. Mueller. No. Costa. No. Ogala. Nineteen affirm. Nineteen no. Two. Two affirmative. Nineteen. Yep. With two affirmative, nineteen negative, the motion fails. All right. Resolution twenty three dash one hundred three, appropriating transportation funds one hundred thousand dollars to utility relocation engineering costs for associated with improvements of Galga Road, County Highway fifty two, County Board District two, and I so move. Motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Pretzel. Madam, any discussion? Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Balich. Yes. Trainier. Yes. Dean Schlotman. Yes. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. Yes. Butler. Yes. Newquist. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Parker. Yes. Williams. Yes. Diaz. Yes. Coleman. Yes. Logan. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Revis. Yes. Mitchell. Yes. Ortiz. Berkowitz, Mueller, <laughs> Costa, yes. Ogala. Yes. 20, 20, 20 members in the affirmative. Motion carries. 23 104, confirming award of contract to Iroquois Paving Corporation $1,201,194.50 for Cedar Road County Highway 4, resurfacing from U.S. Route 52 north to Lairway Road in District 2, and I so move. Motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Pretzel. Previous roll, Previous roll call by Freeman, seconded by Newquist. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 23-105, improvement by county under the Illinois Highway Code for Cedar Road, County Highway 4 resurfacing from 52 to Lairway, using our MFT funds, $1.3 million. Same district, and I so move. Second, Freeman. Motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Dean Schlotman. Previous roll call by Freeman, seconded by Costa. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 23-106, confirming award of contract to deconstruction, $334,986.39. Plainfield Road District Overlay on Renwick Road and various roadways in McKenna Woods Subdivision. County Boards District 7 and 8, and I will make that motion. Motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Revis. Um, co County Board Member Mueller, would you like to be added to the, as a yes? yes? Okay. Seconded previous roll call by Logan. Second by Coleman. Second by Coleman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 23-107, appropriating transportation funds, $410,900 for the acquisition, acquisition of necessary right-of-way from uh, improvements for West River Road, County Highway 26, from Coal City Road to Illinois Route 53, County Board District 1, and I, I'll make the motion. Motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Dean Schlotman. Previous roll call by Second. Costa, seconded by Freeman. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 23-108, authorizing approval of establishment of altered speed zones 612 through 625, 
along various county highways and all the county board districts, and I so move. Second, Freeman. Motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Freeman. Previous roll call by Lee uh, Logan. Second. Se uh, previous <laughs> seconded by Rickman. Sorry, I'm blending names. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Resolution 23-109, authorizing approval of establishment of altered speed zone 626 through 664 along various county highways, all the county board districts, and I so move. Motion by Van Dyne. Seconded by Mueller. Previous by roll call by Logan. Seconded by Costa. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Two to go. 23-110, authorizing approval of establishment of altered speed zone 665 along Regan Road with, within New Lenox Township Road District, County Board District 5, and I so move. <coughs> Motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Parker. Previous roll. Previous roll call by Freeman. Second. Seconded by Dean Schlotman. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Lastly, resolution 23-111, authorizing approval of establishment of altered speed zone 666 along County Highway 88, Weber Road, County Board District 9, and I will make the motion. Motion by Van Dyne, seconded by Ortiz. Previous roll call by Mueller. Seconded by Logan. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. And our next Public Works and Transportation Committee meeting is scheduled for May 2nd, 2023 at 9 a.m. And that concludes our report. Thank you. Next we have Chair Freeman, Public Health and Safety. Thank you. Good morning. Um, we had a wonderful meeting. Um, the Sunny Hill Nursing Home came and gave us the um, emergency preparedness presentation. Will County Health Department came with the Director of Environmental Health and included a food safety and water testing presentation. The Sheriff's Office came with the Detective School Resource Officer presentation and we had a um, presentation put on file for the substance abuse initiative update. We have nothing to bring forward. Our next meeting will be um, May 9th at 9 a.m. And I encourage you all to look at the um, attachments in the agenda for public health and safety and you can see what we discussed. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to Legislative Committee, Chair Berkowitz. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, good morning, everyone. In March, uh, leadership uh, went to Springfield and met with uh, several legislators. And uh, I don't know if anyone has a report on that. And Chair Ogala would like to comment. Oh, hold on a second. Thank you. Sorry, it's usually the chair gives the report. I just want to make it. Are you talking on behalf of the, are you giving the whole synopsis today, Judy? Oh, yeah, you do. Sorry. That's all. What I was going to ask oh. is that those that attended the meeting, if they could, the day, the lobby day, if you would like to go ahead and mention how you felt about it, because this is something that we're looking at doing, um, is to send different people down to Springfield to have conversations with the legislators and talk with them so they get to know us. So I thought if you would like to share your experiences. And uh, so we have uh, a Joe was down there, Shiaki, myself, Steve, and, and then Jennifer was there. So anyone who would like to share the an experience, I'd like you to go ahead and say something. Yeah, I'm going to hold off on that because this is not, this is more conversation for committee work. If you want to give a synopsis of what happened, we'll, we will entertain that at this point. But again, this is not the, we're, we're not voting on anything. If you would like to save to share about the experience during the committee. Well, it's just well, like a report from with NACO. We okay, said. would you like, I mean, you can give a report, but to, at this time to have everyone speak is not the appropriate <clears throat> time. We put it on the oh, agenda. You, yes, I saw that, but I didn't. I, I did not know that, so I would not have, I would recommend it. And you could also, yes, you absolutely, you can share your experience towards the end. So this is if she would like to share, I mean, if you'd like to share the report. 
I'd like to suspend the rules to uh, allow uh, the people that want to talk about their experience to talk. So I make a motion to suspend Second. the rules. Second. Motion by Steve Ballot to suspend the rules. Seconded Second. by Judy O'Gallum. Madam Clerk, any discussion? Joe? Just for clarification, are we going to suspend for comments by the county board members? Is that is that our time for other any other issues that we'd no. like to speak about? Just this. What would you what would you what Sus are you trying to suspend, suspend the, rules the rules for? Tell them to make, for the lobby day to speak. On I'm, it. Make, I'm making a motion to suspend the rules to allow the people that were at the lobby day to speak to their experience. We've done that numerous times before, and I don't see a problem with it now. It's not like we're going to talk. We're, we're spending more time talking about you're, this. You're right. 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 It's just not appropriate. We are in a county board meeting. It's not the appropriate place well, for a county. I mean, we can talk at the, but that's fine. That's fine. If you're going to spend the real second, all in favor? Aye. Uh, any opposed? There you go. Judy, please take the. All right. Wheel. So one of the things we want And with doing that, we started, we had a breakfast back a couple months ago, a couple weeks ago, and followed after that to a lobby day. So there was a group of us that went to lobby day, and we all had different experiences. My experience was able to um, show everybody around to the different places at, down in Springfield, get to introduce and speak to some of the legislators, many of them were in their offices. We did get to speak with Marilyn Manley. She had special time for us, which was very nice. They liked us coming and having that conversation. So for myself, I liked it, but I was wanting to everyone to understand what we're doing here as a governmental body so you can understand what we're doing in our work. So um, I would like anyone else who did uh, attend that day, like I said, we have Micah, Jackie, Steve, and Joe and Jennifer were there. And Meta? Who? Annette. Annette, I'm sorry, Lo Siento. And Annette Parker. I knew I was missing somebody. Thank you. If you guys would like to speak, thank you. Judy or um, Jackie. Thank you. Um, I'd been down there before. I personally feel it's it's better for me to meet with people locally. Uh, but uh, And every legislator's office that Mike and I went to together, pretty much there was nobody there. But I will say I had a fantastic breakfast that morning uh, with our former county board member, our new senator, Rachel Ventura. And then later got to read in, I think it was in Politico, no, Capital Facts, about how as a freshman senator she had introduced more bills than any other previous freshman legislator. And she also got kudos in the Capital Facts from uh, a fellow senator who apparently is not known for saying nice things. And he spoke eloquently about how well Rachel is doing as our senator in negotiating and coming to compromise uh, to get bills moving forward. And that was most exciting. Thank you. Uh, County Board Member Balich. She called me? Mm -hmm. I didn't hear you. Going back the yellow way, right? But, um, oh, don't worry about it. Uh, I just want to say that when I went there, I've been there a lot of times in the past, and I know a lot of people down there, and, you know, it's, it's different when you're going down there with an express purpose. And the express purpose that I had was giving out our legislative agenda. And I don't remember how many I had, but they, they gave us all a handful, like maybe three or four, and I just give me a whole bunch. And uh, I passed all the ones I had out, so there was probably about maybe 10 or 15. I don't even I didn't keep track. But everybody I talked to when I ran out of the legislative agenda, I talked to them about that. And it was a lot of people, and they were all really, really happy to talk about it. And so what I got out of it was a few of them said that we need to be down there more often because they like to hear from us directly rather than just a lobbyist or or just something they read in a the paper, they like to hear from us because we're the ones that are most affected by it. So 
I just want to say it was an, for me it was extremely positive experience and I got to talk a lot of people I got to take a picture with Jennifer and you know I thought that was funnier than hell all my friends are going what did you do and I said what I can be friends with her County Board Member Freeman. Good morning again. Um, Joe and I sat down with a group of um, other county people, municipals, and other type of people in uh, Representative Harmon's office, and I would say that was my biggest takeaway was that we were able to listen to their concerns and our concerns, and it was very interesting sitting there, and Joe was excellent speaking about public works and transportation. Um, he's got a lot of knowledge there. So that was my biggest takeaway. It was a lot of networking. Thank you. County Board Member Parker. So I'll agree with Jackie. It is good to meet with your legislators while they're here, but that's their house and they're proud of the work that they did to get there and they were uh, appreciative that we were there. Um, they liked that we were there. They appreciated the effort of us coming down uh, we were there with the Will County Governmental League, um, so it was nice to hear things that they were in support of or opposed to, and um, it was just nice to get to walk around the building and meet with the legislators. Um, the breakfast and the lunch, it was good networking um, to hear different sides, uh, different perspectives of why bills are proposed and then how they come out and, and the changes that are made. So I think it was good that we went, and we should continue to go. County Board Member Van Dyne. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, getting back to my question earlier, I just I was afraid that we were going to pass over the county board report uh, members reporting. I didn't want anyone to lose their opportunity if that's the, this time to speak. Anyway, um, I wanted to go so bad that I paid my own way down to Springfield. So, uh, just joking. Anyway, um, but you did. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did get to speak uh, with. Senator Harmon, President Harmon, in the morning, and uh, I made sure that we thanked the, our legislators for allowing us to implement a gas tax anywhere from four to eight cents because everyone here in the county knows how valuable that is and, and uh, how important it is to uh, improve our infrastructure. So we made sure that we thanked them for that opportunity and it was uh, it was it was really nice to sit down in, in their office and have one on one conversations with those folks and um, the the ongoing joke was the uh, the Will County Governmental League was asking for the LGTF um, that was the big discussion about the local uh, distribution of funds uh, they kind of laughed about it and Harmon had made a comment that we can go back to the old way and we he would they would take away our cannabis and and our uh, gaming money, so that was um, it was kind of his way of saying I think we're we're pretty funded as of as of now. So anyway, um, yeah, it was great. Thank you. All right, thank you. So just to be clear here, I am not trying to stifle everyone from sharing, and we, that's why we have county board opportunity at the end of the meeting. My suggestion is, and my request is, if you are going to would like to expand upon this give this to your chair so your chair can read a a report that is all I'm, I'm trying to keep order at this meeting it, it, it's fine and I know people are anxious but there's two opportunities you give it to your chair or we have county board oppor, you know opportunity at the end to to talk about your issue so that's my only concern and you know you got to be careful about suspending the rules continually because I'm gonna get smarter and start uh, figuring out how to manipulate that <laughs> so just we're, we're, we're good What's that? I'm, what's that? Manipulate it. Oh, okay. Very good. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we, we actually didn't even do it. I don't think so. We're, we're absolutely fine. Thank you, though. Judy, back to you. Thank you, Madam Executive. Um, and we have a resolution attached um, from the Legislative Committee. The Will County Board Legislative Committee recommends the Will County Fiscal Year 2023 State Legislative Agenda and Priorities 
be amended to include the two-page legislative update as attached, as well as opposition of Senate Bill uh, 333 on behalf of the CACs, our Children's Advocacy Center, uh, on behalf of their request. Uh, Senate Bill 0333 allows victims of sexual assault who come to the emergency room the ability to delay law enforcement notification for 24 hours. The primary concern with this is that although this is a viable option for adults, children who are under the age of 12 and are victims of sexual assault, they need the requirement of police notification. So um, we have attached this resolution to address the concerns um, uh, and in respect of our CAC. Uh, we, we have a strong desire to support them. They're in the field, they're there during times of need, and we need to continue to provide them with the tools that they have to to protect our community. Um, so I, this resolution is attached and I so move. Motion by Berkowitz, second by Rebus. Any discussion? County Board Member Newquist. Yes, I just wanna make sure I understand what we're voting on. So are we voting on the uh, resolution that uh, Julie just referred to and the legislative update, is this a package vote? That's how it was presented. Is that my? That is correct. So, Sherry, in you, if you recall, um, we are creating a living document with our legislative update so that we can address the concerns that come before the county with the amount of legislation being created y yes, and, I and brought to our attention, this gives us the ability to let our legislators know uh, what are our concerns. Yes, I, I understand, but I um, my issue is that the legislative update booklet includes opposition to the airport, and the majority of the communities that I now represent in my new district are in favor of the airport, so it's very difficult for me to vote on a package here, and yet the CAC, the, uh, the, you know, the bill addressing the sexual assault uh, reporting requirements, obviously, I, you know, would not want to see that notification changed for children. So I just wanted to make sure that I was very clear on what we were voting on. Thank you. County Board mm -hmm. Member, oh, we have three speakers ready. County Board, or Chair Ogala. Thank you. So, so what's happened always is we've just created a state legislative agenda and we've done nothing with it. We create it, we send it to the state, and that's the end of it. We don't know what the bills are going to be. So we're looking at bills that impact the county, okay? Mm -hmm. The opposition to the airport is right now with the Will County, we don't have any input into that airport at all, the way that legislation is written. So we need to look at that through our legislative committee and see if we can find somebody, probably a person who was here before, Rachel Ventura, to help help give us some say in what would happen if that airport were to be built. And other bills that come forward as far as impacting us here at the county, the trailer bill for the solar and wind where it took away siting, local siting. This, if we, what we're able to do is leadership can do it to get together, make a decision that we are oppose or support, and put together this document and send it to our lobbyists so they can speak in favor or an opposition of, to a particular situation. Everyone may not always agree on this, but leadership is the one that agrees. We can't always do it in legislative committee because like the one thing with the CAC came up on Friday at 3.30 in the afternoon. So her meeting was the previous Tuesday and you know there was no way we could do it. <coughs> so this is a way we, we asked the state's attorney to give us information how we could go about doing it and they did that. This makes us stronger as a body so that the legislators in Springfield know how we feel on a bill. If they have told us that if a bill comes before them, they don't even, they don't know anything besides what they've given, they don't know how to vote. And when we did go to Springfield, we had quite a few of the uh, secretaries did say that they gathered that information, put together a spreadsheet, and let the people that they work for know, hey, this group opposes or supports something. 
So that's to be an advocate for the county to support or oppose certain things that impact the county. It won't be any kind of things that are like uh, representing schools or something like that that doesn't impact us here, but only for stuff like that. So that's, that's our purpose here. Thank you. Yeah. As a representative from District 3, I just wanted to state my observation from the many people that I've spoke to. And many of the people, if not all the people that I've spoke to, are not in favor of the airport. So just for the record, that is my observation. County, County Board Member Mueller. Um, as Sherry pointed out, most of my neighbors don't really know much about the airport because we're so far up north from it. But I do have concerns about us sending out. I, I'm struggling with voting for this because I want to help the CAC, but I'm, I'm not in favor of sending forward an opposition to the airport at this point. Um, also, I'm just concerned about what's going out of the office without, I, I feel like we need to have at least a legislative committee vote for these things. Uh, I just, I'm really concerned about it. Previous, as the previous majority leader, the reason we chose not to make these unilateral choices and send out letters that the three of us agreed on was because we didn't feel it was fair to the other 23 members on the board. Um, as we knew that everyone has different feelings on everything, um, we always encouraged folks to write their own letters to their representatives or to people with their own, on their own county board letterhead with their own signatures. And maybe other board members would wanna do that with them, but we did not make moves as leadership without having everyone's uh, buy-in on that. So, um, or vote on that, I should say. So, um, I just wanted to make that clear about previous, uh, the previous way that we have, had chosen to proceed. Thank you. Thank you. County Board Member uh, Newquist. Yes, I, I have a lot of issues with the airport in terms of our lack of representation. So I'm not saying I, you know, am wholeheartedly in agreement. But what I'd like to do, if possible, is vote on the two issues separately. I mean, is it possible to vote on the resolution for the CAC and then vote on the legislative update as two separate issues? I'd like to make a motion to amend that if you guys are willing to do that to two separate votes. Second. Okay, so you're, you're, just to be clear, you're making a motion to amend the resolution to separate the two votes for CAC and, and I, I If that's possible, CAC, yeah, I don't know CAC how to do that, but. <laughs> airport. So first we're going to take the, there's a motion a second just to take a vote whether or not the whole body would like to separate the two. That's the first motion. So we have a first and a second. Any discussion on that? So I'll start with just the order. I know some of them didn't talk the last time, but there's a new, there's a new motion and then we can come back. So, uh, so did you, um, Kay, did you want to talk on this, the separation? Okay. I'm going to, if you could, uh, Mr. Revis, did you want to talk about on the separation of the motion first? Yeah, I okay. would. Appropriate. We separate these two items. Um, it just doesn't seem fair to lump them in. I know that that might not be the answer everybody on the board wants to hear, but it, it, it wouldn't be appropriate to lump these two things together. Thank you. County Board Member Trenier on the motion to, to separate. Okay. Yes. Um, I, honestly, I mean, I didn't know how we were going to vote on this, but, I, you know, in looking at my agenda, there is an A, yeah. B, and a C. Uh, it would make sense to me, then, that we vote on them as A, B, and C. I, again, I don't know how the attorneys look at things, um, but I know there's an overall title, but then there's three separate attachments, so, yeah. We'll let everyone go talk, and we'll make sure we have it right by the attorneys by the time we're done. County Board Member uh, Butler on the separation. Okay, so we're going to vote on each one, and if the vote comes out that everything is going to be approved, then they would go down as one package. Correct. 
It can, yeah. How it goes down is not. But so you're gonna, it's not, yeah. nothing's getting eliminated from vote. That's all I'm concerned if you, about. If you are going to separate them each and they all go down, yes, it'll go down to the Springfield as. However, I'm not sure how the oh. county board sends that information down. Okay, yes, I just wanted to make sure that they were all going to be voted on. And you're going to vote on everyone. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. That's what they're asking to separate them. Mm -hmm. Board or Chair Ogala and then Elder so I just want you guys to know that you cannot just separate these two items because they're not just two items. One was a legislative update for the CAC, which is Senate Bill 333. The other one was a packet of legislation. I don't have the numbers before me, but there was a packet thing. It had the trailer bill for the solar and wind. Yes, whatever those are. So there are a bunch of different things. So we would have to vote on each one individually. And while I understand previous leadership did not take this, that was one of my my uh, things that I felt we were weak as a board is that we did not take the opportunity to voice, to give our opinion on any position that came forward. We just submit a legislative agenda and then sit back. My opinion, if we're going to do that, why have a legislative committee? It can end after we set that legislative agenda. We do not have to continue to do it. I think it's very important for us to give opinions on certain bills that come forward. Because some bills are proposed by people down south. They don't know anything about us up north. They don't know what our, how we work or operate. And I think it's important for us to be very strong and do these legislative agendas. We may not all agree on every issue, and that would be, that's fine with me. We could do them one at a time. That way we vote as a resolution on each one individually. This is a new thing. So we can do that going forward. Everyone will be a separate legislative agenda update. So how many are on that list there, Julie? How many on the first list? I forget. Four items on that list, and then the last one is the CAC. So that would be five different votes then. And, and I did want to see also CAC. With that, All right, County Board Member Berkowitz. Thank you, Madam Executive. Um, I'd like to just um, ensure to each member on this board that individually our voices are important, but collectively there are very few um, issues where we are all 100% on board. And that's just because we have different districts, we, we're, we're different people. But we work together, and we work together with the goal of representing our constituents, our county, our families, our businesses, everyone who calls Will County home or has um, a vested interest in our county. That's our job. But we have to realize that we're, we're not all on board at the same time. But we have to, what we have done with each one of these items on our legislative update is we've looked at the bill and we have determined what is in the best interest of most of our constituents in Will County. And yeah, you're not going to make everyone happy. But overall, this legislative update has the conclusion of that discussion. And these things have been discussed. I invite all of you to come to the legislative committee and share your input, your concerns, if you're not on the committee. You're welcome. We want to work together. But it is important. And um, Sherry, if you don't support the airport, I, I respect that. But there are a lot of people who object to it and don't support it. And th this is the result of it. So I don't know why we would go back to something we've already presented and brought forward. I, I don't know why we would do that. Um, I think right now what's important is, is we focus on why are we doing this and, 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 and what do we need to do today? We need to exercise our vote and fight for the interests in our co county. So I want to, I'm hoping we can just bring this back to what we really need to do today. And again, you all have an invitation. Come to our committee, legislative, and share your voice. We want to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you. We have four more speakers. County Board Member Balich. Yeah. Uh, when we talked about this over and over again in various committees or whatever, 
But it, the bottom line was, whether you think the airport should go in there or you don't, the reason that we're opposing it, for 100% of the reason, because we didn't talk about it. is it good for us or bad for us or anything else, what we're worried about is good government. So city of Chicago, or Cook County, excuse me, comes in with all their stuff and our land and is going to build an airport. We're going to, on our land, they're going to build an airport. We get all the uh, pains from all the infrastructure getting wrecked. We don't get any revenue back, and it's our land. So why in the hell would we allow that? Just think about something. If your next-door neighbor said, I'm going to put a dumpster on your driveway, and I'm not going to pay anything to put it there. And then when it's gone, I'm going to make you pay to fix your own driveway. They made their money. The, the whole point is that we can't let Cook County push us around. So that was why it's opposed, because everyone agrees. Does anybody disagree that we shouldn't say no to Cook County taking all the revenue and giving us nothing? Now, we're not a bunch of asses. We're smart people here, I think. I got, I'm done, because I'll start saying some really nasty things. want that. Okay. Thank you for being done. Uh, <laughs> County, County Board Member Parker. No, I understand the concerns about the airport, and <laughs> I, I know people feel different ways. But kind of back to what Balich said, it's not, the opposition is that we don't have a voice at the table, and that's what we're looking for. So I just wanted to clarify, it's not whether we're in support or opposing the airport, it's we want to be involved in the decision making. Would it be helpful? Do you have the res would you like to read the language for that so maybe people feel a little more comfortable, Julie? Can you do that? Is it in your, I mean, okay, well, I was, that's fine. I'm just maybe, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get to a resolution here. Uh, county board, that's okay, she said no. They don't want to. County Board Member Newquist. <laughs> so I appreciate what you guys are saying about the airport. However, the legislative agenda does not say that we oppose it because we don't have a voice at the table, which I 100% agree with. The, 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 legi the, the legislation booklet just says that we oppose it. It, and it gives a list of reasons, and the reasons are all qualitative, you know, state of life, financial reasons, et cetera, all of which are valid concerns. But not once, that, at, at least if I'm reading it, does it express that we do not want, you know, that we're against this because we don't have a seat at the table. So maybe it's just the way that it's worded, because I could 100% agree that if there were an airport, we should benefit financially from it, and we should have a seat at the table, a large seat, multiple seats at the table. Thank you. County Board Member Van Dyne. I have you, you. When you press your button, I have you, so just, and it comes in order, just so you folks know here. I got you. Yeah. Uh, I, I agree with Sherry. I'm reading the, the, our opposition is due to the following, and not once does it say anything about well, maybe it does say one item is about our tax revenue, but loss of family, friends, and home in the rural community, um, recent cargo, ex cargo expansion at major airports, and a list five, five different airports for being a reason why to oppose this. Uh, one last comment is if we do not break this up, then I will be a no on, a, on the entire package. Can I, can I make a suggestion, that Sherry? Because obviously we don't want to read through all five of those and have, vote on it. Is if the issue is just the airport, I would suggest maybe you make the motion to pull out the airport and just have that one voted separately. But you, I, right. <laughs> okay, so my suggestion is make a motion to amend the contents to remove the language about the airport. And be as simple as that. If if the motion to amend prevails, then the airport language is removed, and you move forward without the airport language. If it if it's yeah. successful, then it's or or if it's not successful, then the language for the airport stays in as written, and you move forward without amending it. Does that make sure sense? You would... Yeah, I will. I will make. I will make a motion okay. to re. 
Go ahead. She's talking. To remove the airport uh, from the uh, from the wording, and I would also like to add that I think the airport discussion needs to be had, and we should perhaps we should address it at a later date. But I would like to remove it now from this package, and then I can support it. Thank you. Okay, so motion by Nuke was seconded by Mueller. We aren't going to get people, we've already suspended the rules here, folks. You guys have already decided that you don't want to follow protocol, so we're not going to have a point of order now because we don't like things. So I am sorry, you're going to pick or choose. We're going to do it this way. So we are going to allow people still to talk. So we have an amendment there, a first and second. We will still allow people to have a conversation. So Mr. Re Revish, you are next. So we, I was in legislative committee. And when this was presented, this legislative update, I thought it was a great idea to give us a voice on many of these issues that happen in Springfield, and they come in a significant volume, so it would give us a chance to comment on these items. So I thought the legislative update was good. However, I misunderstood. I didn't realize voting yes on that meant that every county board meeting, there would be a new package of bills that we would have to adopt within this legislative committee. I misunderstood that. I understand that might be my fault, but I, for, for in this packet, there are four bills. All of them, I agree with what the proposed position is on the legislative update, but is it the best way to lump them in and have everybody vote on it? I didn't realize that in that vote, in that legislative vote, that that's what that does. So I do think it is appropriate to break these items out or at least talk about them more in depth. So I apologize for mis my misunderstanding. County Board Member Butler. Since our primary responsibility here is to spend the taxpayers' money um, of our county, that's what we do. We figure out where all the money goes. And in our opposition, it clearly states that we're not going to benefit from the tax revenues on something that's going to happen within our county. And that's why we're opposing this. And then it, it, it also uh, talks about having to shift the tax burden to the residents. I mean, this is, this is a huge topic for this board, and we definitely want to be at the table. So if we're going to make an amendment, we should make an amendment that includes it in the package, but just states that we want to be at the table. County Board Member Berkowitz. Thank you. So we can take this position and we can address your concerns by adding the words, Will County does not have a seat at the table, therefore we object. But what I'm wondering, Joe, Meta, and Sherry, is we make it very clear in our opposition that we don't feel that any that another county should come into our county, take our land, um, take away people's homes and vital farmland and agriculture, and take away our tax revenue. We don't support that. And if you don't support that as well, I don't understand why you would oppose this. So. I guess we'll find out. I think if you don't vote for this, then it's, it tells me that you're okay with having another county come in and take our land and take away our tax revenue. And that's the message I'm getting. County Board Member Richmond. So speaking from the finance side, I've never heard government say we've got plenty of money and we can throw it away to somebody else. The way I read this first line in here, it says, uh, yet we will not benefit from tax revenue generated. So one of the biggest things that are going to impact our county would be an airport. It would impact every one of us from infrastructure perspective to quality of life. Those all have a cost. They have a cost of roads and infrastructure and all that, as well as an emotional cost to a lot of people. I... <laughs> I can't see how we would ever, Steve, you gave a very good analogy, letting somebody put a dumpster in your driveway. That would, none of us would go for that. So from that perspective there, if we don't have a seat at the table, we don't re realize any of the revenue from it, but we're going to bear all the burden 
of all the costs as well as the burden for our residents, that's insane. That's all I have. Thank you. Can I, is there a specific bill you are objecting to so we can at least uh, that, or is it just kind of the overall concept, Julie? Because I'm hearing a lot of things and I just want to, is it, is there an actual, are we, you're talking about, okay, it's in there, okay. I go, again, it's just kind of philo philosophicals coming out and, or if it's, there's actual, thank you, that's, all right. Dean, Dean Schlotman. Thank you, Madam Executive. Um, I just want to say, you know, we all talk about then the environmental impact of everything and we are forcing, you know, electric vehicles, and we're looking for that. I mean, are these planes going to be electric? Or is that what we're looking for? Is this all going to, this airport's going to come in, and it's going to be green all over the place? Because yeah. cargo planes are not going to do that. So if we're going to oppose or be for something, let's be consistent across the board. If we're talking environmentally for all these other things that we do, how is this environmentally good for our county? I'm just curious. Does anyone have that answer, how this is going to impact the environment appropriately? Because I don't see that happening. That's why. County board member Ortiz. Yeah, I just have a question because of what Mark said. Um, so <clears throat> you said that you weren't sure, you didn't know that we were going to have to adopt bills. That's what you said? Well, I, uh, I oh, yeah, this is, this is, I mean, you need to, you can direct the chair or me. I don't know if that, I mean, if it's a legit, what are you trying to ask him? I mean, like, you, he just shared his comment of his experience that he did not. So that's all. Right. Yeah. So I'm asking, I'm asking, uh, to for him to clarify. You said that you didn't know that they were. That means that we were going to so, yes. adopt. That so we're adopting yes. things. Is that what you're saying? I mean, I'm happy to answer it if you guys want me to. I, I'm going to. But um, so when we were in committee, we, lost we may have gone through each one of these individual bills. I I don't. Re necessarily recollect that I know that our lobbyists gave us an update on much of the legislation I guess I just didn't link the two adding it to the report and then on a regular basis I just feel like if the items want to be added to the agenda it would be best if we broke them out separately because right now as it stands we're gonna if a yes vote on this would be a yes vote for opposing a property tax settlement like an oil refinery refinery supporting wind and solar regulation uh, quick take legislation and then the airport all those issues are so nuanced and we're lumping them into one I, one thing and I don't necessarily know if that would be fair to our other board members to do something like that I personally would like to talk about them individually on an individual basis that's my point I'm going to start hitting new people who have not spoken yet so we're gonna to go to I can't remember I think Joe have you've spoken on this topic Okay, uh, County Board Member Williams. <laughs> like to call the question, please. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I did, and I did not do that. All right. We have a, um, we need a second. Second, a Trader. Uh, you're voting on to call the question, which now is to, I'm going to have Mary, if you don't mind, Mary. <laughs> Sorry. So the question is to amend the agenda item to remove the discussion on House Bill 2531, uh, which regards the third airport. So our first vote here is to call the question. It was motioned by Williams, seconded by Trenere. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. We're not, this is just, this is, this is just to call the vote. This is what you're voting on now. It's, it's, do they know? Do you, do you understand? We're just calling the vote right now. Like so this just, is just whether or not we can stop discussion and move on. This yeah. is, you're voting to stop discussion and, and moving and on. This is what we're voting on, to yeah. stop discussion. Okay. You just it's, stop discussion no, just, and everything. Just yeah, just, just voting. All right, if you have, Judy, are you okay? All right. Just, oh, I thought we, we were voting on her amendment. We're, no, no, not now, because she moved to, we still had discussion items. She moved to call the question. Jackie seconded. So we're moving just to call the call, question yes, so okay. we can take Thank the vote. Just, Hang on. just We're not voting on anything right now, just so we can vote on that. Yeah, yep, just, yep. So just so we can vote on that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We're going to come back to the actual legislation, the actual vote. All right. Balich. Balich. Call the question. Trainier. Yes. Dean Schlotman. Yes. Van Dyne. Yes. 
Pretzel. Yes. Butler. Yes. Newquist. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Parker. Williams. Diaz. Coleman. Logan. Yep. Freeman. Yes. Revis. Yes. Mitchell. Yes. Ortiz. Yes. Berkowitz. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Costa. Yes. Ogella. Yes. 21. Okay, 21 affirmed. The motion is carried. We're going to call the roll call. Now, here, this is what, once again, Mary, this is what you are voting on now. You're on. Oh, I keep doing the wrong one. Oh, there we go. Okay, so now you're voting to amend the agenda item to remove the, the discussion on the airport and the opposition to House Bill 2531. You're voting to amend the agenda item to remove the discussion, the, the written discussion with regard to House Bill 2531, which is, addresses the airport. If we keep it in, it still can be amended. Is that correct? She just said discussion. You have yeah, to think, vote yeah. on whether or yeah. not your the whole entire that. board is willing to stop discussion. So that's the vote you just took. <coughs> the county board voted that yes, we're going to stop discussion, and now we're going to vote on the amendment. Okay. No more discussion. No more discussion. But but yeah. yeah. We're not, yes. yes, we can't. We have to. We we stop that discussion. Now we're st we're we're starting discussion for the separation. So, and she had a clarification question. Miss, did you get your answer? Oh, no. Okay, I'm sorry. Re repeat your question. Yes. Okay. There's. I don't. Um, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. The point, do we all understand what we're voting on? Yes. Okay. All right. I just, I just want to make sure. I don't. Okay. Thank you. All right. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. I just. Balich. No. Trainier. No. Dean Schlotman. No. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. No. Butler. No. Newquist. Richmond, no. Parker, yeah. Williams, no. Diaz, yeah. Coleman, no. Logan, no. Freeman, yeah. Revis, no. Mitchell, no. Ortiz, no. Berkowitz, no. Mueller, yeah. Costa, Ogala. Seventeen in the negative. The motion fails. So now we will go back to the. We will go back to the original motion that Julie had. We already had a motion and a second on that, correct? To approve that agenda item as presented. Is there any discussion on that? I oh, will. <laughs> okay, Madam. Making sure. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Balich? Yes. Trainier? Yes. Dean Schlotman? Yes. Van Dyne? No. Pretzel? Yes. Butler? Yes. Newquist? Yes. Richmond? Yes. Parker? Yes. Williams? Yes. Diaz? Yes. Coleman? Yes. Logan? Yes. Freeman? Revis? Uh, Mitchell? Yeah. Ortiz? Yeah. Berkowitz? Yeah. Mueller? Yeah. 
Costa? Ogala. Eighteen affirmative. Eighteen in the affirmative. The motion carries. You have an exciting committee, Chair Berkowitz. You're back up. <laughs> thank you, Th mm -hmm. and thank you for your cooperation, and uh, Mary, also to you and your staff. Um, so please, you're all welcome to join us at our next legislative committee meeting, which is scheduled for uh, Tuesday, May second, at 12 p.m. Hope to see you there. Thank you. All right, thank you. County Board Member Mueller, or Chair Mueller, Capital Improvements. Good morning, everyone. Um, in the interest of keeping this clean, I'd like to make a motion that we reinstate the rules of the County Board. Second. second thank you. Yeah, I think, yeah. I'm not, I'm done. We'll, we'll just, case. I guess we'll just, we really didn't have a, we really didn't have actually a vote for that. Okay. It was made in second. Okay. We are, we just allowed, I just allowed okay. people to, to talk. I'm just saying Thank that it's, we can't continue okay. this format, but you're... Um, well, then I will proceed. Uh, we had reports. We don't have any resolutions to bring forward this month. We had reports on the various projects in the county, the RNG plant, um, which we're really, really close to being completely operational in. Uh, the morgue is 50% completed, and it is currently on budget, so we can all be very proud of ourselves on that. Um, there... Like with Micah's committee, there are several reports you can look at on the agenda if you want to get any specifics. Otherwise, I will see you all May 2nd at our next meeting at 10 a.m. here at this building. Thank you. So to be clear, there's no, we did not officially amend any any rules. I just acquiesced and allowed the, the conversation. So people are clear, the rules are not open, they're not suspended, we're all kosher. Um, Chair O'Gala, Ex uh, Executive. Oh, do you have a question? Um, Any reports on the agenda under Capital? It, are they on a different website or? So we have to go to the Capital Committee meeting. It's not on this agenda. I just want to clarify. Okay, thank you. Chair O'Galley, you, you set? I am ready. I'm ready. <laughs> okay, <laughs> off to the races. Here we go. I'd like to make a motion to open uh, the public hearing regarding prohibiting the use of groundwater as potable water supply. Motion by O'Gala, seconded by Trainer. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Valich. Yes. Trainer. Yes. Dean Schlotman. Yes. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. Yes. Butler. Yes. Newquist. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Parker. Yes. Williams. Yes. Diaz. Yes. Coleman. Yes. Logan. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Revis. Yes. Mitchell. Yes. Ortiz. Yes. Berkowitz. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Costa. Yes. O'Gala. Yes. We are now in public hearing. Please be advised, absolutely no new evidence or information will be allowed once this public hearing is closed. Do we have any comments from the public regarding this hearing? Nope. I, I thought I'm walking. I didn't know if he was walking up towards <laughs> us, so that's fine. Uh, motion, motion to close Second. by Trenier, seconded by Pretzel. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Balich. Yes. Trainer. Yes. Dean Schlotman. Yes. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. Yes. Butler. Yes. Newquist. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Parker. Yes. Williams. Yes. Diaz. Yes. Coleman. Yes. Logan. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Revis. Yes. Mitchell. Yes. Ortiz. Yes. Berkowitz. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Costa. Yes. Ogala. Yes. 21. 21 affirmative motion carries. Chair. Gala. Item number two, 23-113, prohibiting the use of groundwater's potable water supply by the installation or use of potable water supply wells or any other method within a designated restricted groundwater zone. And I so move. Second. Motion by O'Gala, seconded by Trenier. Previous roll call by Berkowitz. Seconded by Richmond. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. 
Item number three, 23-114, approving the list of applicants under the ARPA Health Pillar to move to stage three for evaluation process, and I so move. Motion by Ogala. Second. Seconded by Costa. So I'd like to make a comment okay, to everybody. Um, discussion, county board, or Chair Ogala. So as you all heard at your caucuses, Democrat and Republican caucus has been a long time getting to this point. We were hoping to move forward um, several months ago. We just didn't make it. So um, <clears throat> last night we had, there was a conversation at the Democratic caucus. This morning uh, we had our finance person meet with uh, leadership and discuss a compromise to that so that we could move this forward and not wait another month before handing out dollars for the health pillar. And um, so it's on your desk you have the compromised uh, list of uh, applicants. The applicants' names have not changed. The list names has not changed. The amount of people have not changed. It's this one. It's on your desk. So you have a copy on your desk. They didn't get a handout? Yeah, yeah. that's what I thought. So it's the same list, Micah. It hasn't changed. The, the scoring has remained the same. Everything is the same. We have the, um, the ma minimum distribution of $50,000. So if somebody asked for some money, we gave them minimum distribution of 50000 That was the agreement made with previous leadership. They wanted to give somebody at least some money. Um, there's the addition to this of um, maximum distribution of $1.5 million. By doing that, we're able to give money to everybody who moved forward within this list, including the four people that weren't part of the list in the beginning because of the fact that they had... Um, Reasons they get all their paperwork in, we overlooked that. They, they still qualified, so we move forward with that. So before you is this list. It shows that by doing that, we'll give out $17,209,795. For the MAP initiative, we'll give $779,806 for a total of $17,989,6000. So we have done by... With, by doing this compromise, what we're doing is we're passing out all the dollars. We're leaving no money sitting on the table. And um, if you're concerned about the MAP initiative not getting its full money, we are able to handle that through contingency. We've done that before, so there's no concerns with that. And that would be our intention to do that. So I would like to make a motion. Oh, lo siento. Okay, thank you. County Board Member Trenier. Thank you. Uh, yes, this has been a long and arduous process for various reasons. I am completely thrilled that we have a number today, but I just want to reiterate, we talked about it at our caucus last night, uh, I want to reiterate the fact that these are not checks being written to organizations within our county. These are award dollars that they are eligible for that for reimbursement, they have to spend the money first, show us receipts, follow the federal guidelines and process of the federal government, and then they will be reimbursed. This is not a check to any organization. I say that loud enough and clear enough. Very good. Thank you. Uh, County Board Member Costa. I just want to commend um, the board for getting to this point. It was a lot of hard work and compromise. Um, I, the only addition that I would have to the resolution is to be very specific that we've got 56 grantees. I don't think that number is spelled out on the preamble. I'd like to see that because I think that's where a lot of the discussion came from is to confirm that all 56 exhausting the $17.8 million. Is it? So is that like just ref that is? So page three is going to be a part of the preamble? Okay. Okay, I'm comfortable with that. Thank you. County Board Member Freeman. Oh, that's fine. Um, I just want to say that I know that it was a lot of hard work getting here, and I'd um, like to say thank you for the leadership and the staff and the county executive for all working with all of our ideas and making sure that this was something that would be possible today. Job well done. Thank you. Right. 
Thank you. So we have a motion. We have a second um, previous roll call by C Coleman. No, you want to, would you like a roll call vote? Okay, county, um, county, okay. Madam Clerk, <laughs> call the roll. Balich. Yes. Trainier. Yes. Dean Schlotman. Yes. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. Yes. Butler. Yes. Newquist. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Parker. Yes. Williams. Yes. Diaz. Yes. Coleman. Yes. Logan. Yes. Freeman. Yes. Revis. Yes. Mitchell. Yes. Ortiz. Yes. Berkowitz. Yes. Mueller. Yes. Costa. Yes. Ogala. 21. Okay, 21 affirmed. Someone said yes. Roll call. Yeah. 21 affirmed. Motion carries. Chair Gall. Thank you, everyone. If we had not approved this today, it would be another month before we could get those dollars moving forward. Thank you. Number four, resolution 23 115, amending the boundaries of the Will Cook Enterprise Zone. And I so move. Motion by Ogala, seconded by Revis. Previous roll call by Mueller. Second, Logan. Second by Logan. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number five, resolution 23-116, authorizing the county executive to negotiate with broker consultant for health, dental, vision, and related insurance benefits, and I so move. Motion by Ogala, seconded by Mueller. Previous. Previous roll call by Van Dyne, seconded by Freeman. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number tw uh, three, sorry, six, resolution 23-117, awarding lease for pharmacy at the Community Health Center, and I so move. Motion, motion by Ogala, seconded by Freeman. Previous roll call by Richmond. Second by Coleman. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Number seven, resolution 23-118, authorizing the IJ with the village of Coal City for the radio system, and I so move. Motion by Ogala, seconded by uh, Trenier. Previous Richmond, okay, we okay, Steve? Okay, previous Richmond, seconded by Dean Schlotman. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item number eight, resolution 23-119, authorizing the IGA, an IGA with the village of Matson for the radio system. I so move. Motion by Ogala, seconded by Freeman. Previous roll call by Revis, seconded by Mitchell. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 9, resolution 23-120, authorizing MOU with CSX Railroad Police for the radio system, and I so move. Motion by Ogala. Second. Second by Mueller. Previous. Previous roll call by Revis, seconded by uh, Trenier. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10. Resolution 23-121, authorizing IGA with Will County 911 ETSB, and I so move. Motion by Ogala, seconded by Revis. Previous roll, Freeman. Previous roll call by Freeman. Seconded by Mueller. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 11, resolution 23-122, extending and amending the agreement with the Illinois Energy Conservation Authority, NFP, as CPA's program administrator, and I so move. Motion by Ogala, seconded by Mitchell. Previous roll call by Trenier, seconded by Mueller. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 12, resolution 23-123, authorizing the county executive to negotiate professional services contract for architectural and engineering services for the Will County ADF roof project. And I so move. Motion by Ogala, seconded by Freeman. Previous roll call by Diaz. Seconded by Richmond. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 13, resolution 23-124, authorizing the second amendment to the IGA with, with Haida. And I so move. Motion by Ogala. Second. Seconded by Trenier. Previous roll call by Pretzel. Seconded by Diaz. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 14, resolution 23-125, replacement hire for animal control administrator, and I so move. Motion by Ogala, seconded by Freeman. Pre previous roll call by Berkowitz, seconded by was it Richmond. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Item 15, Resolution 23-126, Replacement Hire for the Director of Records Management. And I so move. Motion by O'Gala. Second. Seconded by Pretzel. Previous roll call by Mueller. Seconded by Freeman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 16, 23, Resolution 23-127, Replacement Hire for Sunny Hill Nursing Home Director of Life Engagement and Volunteer Coordinator. And I so move. Motion by O'Gala, seconded by Freeman. Previous roll call by Richmond, seconded by Costa. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. The next executive committee meeting is scheduled for May 4th, 2023 at 10 a.m. Okay. Next item on the agenda is appointments by the county executive. I'd like to make a motion to, put, to pass those, move those appointments forward. Second. Motion by O'Gala, seconded by uh, Trenere. Previous roll call by Mueller. Second by Diaz. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. This time we are moving on to public comment relevant to matters under the jurisdiction of the county. If there is any public comment relevant to any county business, you can come right there and, and speak. You are limited to, to three minutes. You'll please introduce yourself. Thank you, sir. Greetings. I am Quinn Adamowski. I'm a resident here in Joliet, but I'm speaking to you as the regional advocacy manager for Landmarks, Illinois. I promise to keep this to three minutes. Um, Thanks, Quinn. At the last meeting, we present, I was here, we presented options that developers came up with for the Will County Courthouse. Today, we actually have a representative from one of those developers who will be speaking to you as well. I want to focus in on the legal side of things. Um, we understand that this land is in trust. We understand that the opinion of the state's attorney is that it has to be used for public use. We have had lawyers look at this and suggest that there's case law that defines public use in a variety of ways, and that preservation in and of itself is considered public use. Now, the state's attorney has disagreed with that assessment. We understand that. So I'm here to report that we are working with some of our state legislators to actually amend the county historic preservation law that would actually define public use pertaining to rehabilitation of historic properties. So that is already in motion. The language is being sent to LRB right now, and we anticipate to have a bill either this session through a shell bill or we will introduce this bill next January depending on how things play out. So I would again encourage you to delay and seek all options, give consideration to all items. There's no need to rush to demolition right now. We have support in this community. We have support at the state level to look at this in a very holistic way. I mentioned before that there's two hurdles. We've passed the one. We have developers who are interested. The second is legal, and that's being at set in motion to resolve. So please, give this consideration, give this time, seek all options for development. Thank you. Thank you, Quinn. Good morning, I'm Nick Macris, and along with Hudson Hollister, I co-chair the Courthouse Preservation Partnership. Four years ago this week, actually, the county board at that time voted to demolish the 1969 courthouse, a decision that was apparently based on financial issues. That board believed it would be less costly to tear down that building and replace it rather than to restore it. What a difference four years makes. At the last Capital Improvements Committee, which I attended, the county government released its official estimates for restoring the existing building versus constructing a new one. According to their presentation, restoration would cost $490 per square foot, times the 140,000 square feet of our building, 
that equals $60 million. Additionally, the estimate to construct a new building would be $675 per square foot, or nearly $95 million for a similarly sized building. Therefore, new construction would cost taxpayers $26 million more, plus the cost of demolition that would be several million dollars, all borne by taxpayers. Considering the new courthouse building took many years to construct, those costs would definitely increase by the time construction begins. That also does not take into account the savings from historic preservation tax credits. Last February, the Illinois Historic Sites Advisory Council voted unanimously to recommend our courthouse to be listed on the National Register of Historic Places. If approved, the restoration of our old courthouse would be eligible for historic preservation tax credits, thus reducing the restoration costs by 20 to 40 percent. Also note that private developers would be investing their own money as opposed to the money paid by taxpayers. By saving our 1969 courthouse, you can play a major role in the revitalization of our downtown. Following me will be Ron Kluwer of Gorman and Company, who will share some of the many successes of his company regarding restoration and repurposing of existing buildings. Thank you very much, and I am pleased to introduce Ron Kluwer. Thank you very much. As um, you heard, my name is Ron Kluwer. I serve as Illinois and Indiana market president for a company called Gorman & Company. We're a Wisconsin headquartered community development firm. Um, currently, we have about $2 billion in market value real estate across 15 states, including about 12,000 apartment units and specifically three historic adaptive reuse hotels. About 60% of our construction now is new construction, about 40% is historic adaptive reuse. I do want to uh, just take a moment to say, while we could have a conversation about historic preservation, I think we should be considering a conversation about economic development. We, um, and I, I, I do want to thank, um, and perhaps you could reach out to your partners here um, across your aisles, but Treasurer uh, Brophy, um, Auditor Blackburn, County board members, Coleman and Diaz, who last fall came to Rockford and looked at the Embassy Suites Hotel. The Embassy Suites Hotel at that time was one of our largest investments in historic adaptive use in the city of Rockford, $87.5 million. About $60 million of that was construction hard costs. We were in a very similar spot as a community that you are today. We had members of our city council who wanted to tear the building down. The building had been empty along our riverfront for more than 40 years. There were others who said, we want to preserve it, a group of citizens who rallied and said, no, let's do something different. In that effort to do something different, we took what was a construction contract for approximately $2 million in demolition with local union trades to a $60 million construction contract for the rehabilitation of the building, and 97% of that money I did say I was from, you know, we're firm is from Wisconsin. I live in Rockford. But 97% of that money went to local tradesmen and businesses for the purchase of materials and the expenditures of labor. We were at a point where our community was saying, do we take the $2 million contract now for demolition or do we wait another year and a half to two years to secure the $60 million? I'm thankful they chose to spend the time and get the $60 million because today that building has led to another $300 million in additional west side downtown development. Um, I'm thankful to say I'm also introduced a $40 million project last week that just made it through ZBA that is four blocks from that hotel and it is all new construction on a formerly vacant brownfield site. So there's significant opportunity before you. I want to thank the, the gentlemen who represent labor here today. And if there are any labor, uh, laborers who are female, welcome as well. But 
I urge you to think about this as an economic development effort as opposed to just a historic effort. As you heard Quinn say, the historic piece is well defined in a path that is well taken. I'm not the only developer who submitted. There were six of us. I'd encourage you to look at all options and consider what you could do to bring economic development to your community in the best interest of the taxpayers, whether that's expand your, corny, corny, your county courthouse, consider it for a hotel or apartments. It sounds like the county courthouse is already being explored, but those are decisions you all should make, and we're happy to help you in any, any part of that path as you move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Zach Strupek. I am a uh, resident of Will County and I am an attorney in your public defender's office. And I'm here this morning because we recently uh, ratified a new contract and I wanted to inform you about some of the issues that we had during that process and with the contract. I think you're entitled to know because you approved that offer and the county spent money on an attorney to go through that negotiation process with us. First, our office has been short seven attorneys for over a year and a half, and we have an embarrassing lack of applications. The reason is pretty obvious. Nobody wants to come be an attorney in the public defender's office at the current starting salary, which is $61,000. I understand that last year you approved a substantial raise to our starting salary because it was $51,000, which put us at the lowest starting salary for public defender's offices in the state. Um, but last year, the 60, raise to $61,000 was barely competitive with the market for attorneys in other offices across the state. This year, the market's moved on, and so we're not attracting any more applications. We don't have any interns that we can turn to, and we're struggling because we provide a constitutionally required service to the citizens of Will County and anybody else who has a vested interest coming through Will County. But we don't, we're running out of attorneys to do that work. The starting salary for our office is not even competitive within Will County because the state's attorney's office starts at $65,000. I don't understand why anybody would want to come do my job and be yelled at by my clients if they could go to the state's attorney's office for more money. Second, our office was expected in this contract to sacrifice one of those attorney positions that we need to fill in order to raise the starting salary of our secretaries to above minimum wage. It was an issue that I understand you were made aware of. It's an issue that the county created in the past that the county provided no additional money to resolve. Instead, we had to eat a position that we already need to fill in order to make sure that our secretaries were being paid more than the minimum wage. Third, we've been trying to negotiate this contract for over a year with the county. And every time we were ready to come to the table, we were urged to delay our negotiations at request of the county's attorney. When, the county, when we did finally receive the county's offer, and it was the county's final offer, it withheld retroactive pay for the period of time that we were negotiating the contract. That's not right. The county is saving at least $300,000 with our office alone in retroactive pay, and we are aware we are not the only unit in Will County that is having retro pay withheld. I find it hard to believe that Will County is so broke that it can't fairly negotiate with its workers. Finally, when we were given the final proposal, we were told there was no additional money that would be afforded to address the issues in our office. We were told by your representative if we, we could use that money and move it around and solve whatever issues we thought we could fix with it. And we did that. We moved the percentages. We tried to move the money around to make the raises more equitable for the people in our office. And when we presented that, we were told by your representative we couldn't do that anymore. I don't understand why, 
whose misrepresentation was that? Was that yours or was it your attorney's? Either way, it's incredibly disheartening that we were told we could do what we could with what we were given, and then when we did, it was taken away from us. I'm hopeful that now that you've been personally made aware of these issues, the next time we negotiate this, you will demonstrate your support for the rights enshrined within the United States and the Illinois Constitution. Thank you. Good morning, Madam Chairman and County Board. My name is Tom White, lifelong Will County resident, uh, here representing Three Rivers Construction Alliance and the building trades of Will and Grundy County. Uh, 23 years, I know I've been talking about this courthouse and the vision for downtown. And I know there's people go beyond that. I go back to Joe Mikan and, and Judge White and then Larry Walsh and Jim Eustace. There was, there was always a plan here for this thing to come down and new development to occur and, and Will County to stop the mishmashing of buildings, repairing old buildings and get into one good building and, and you've got the Emco building and you've got this building and you've got, I don't know, rentals over in one of them Bay's buildings. And I know it was kind of to keep the development going downtown in an effort with Joliet to continue to make the downtown area look better. And I don't want to get caught up in, in, you know, let's save this courthouse. We've got a lot of buildings around here that people are trying to save and we see what happens with them. Like that house they moved in Joliet that's still sitting over there on Route 6 been there for years. I'm appreciative of what they're trying to do, but I think as a, as a county board, you guys need to look at the big picture here of what the goal was to get everybody in, you know, into one area and, and move forward with the county looking like a professional building. And I just want to acknowledge we got operators, laborers, teamsters, iron workers, bricklayers. I'm probably going to miss somebody. Carpenters. I, I mean, I see a vast group, plumbers, you name it. They all came down here in support of seeing you guys move forward with redevelopment of this as a new building where that thing was. Thank you for your time. All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name's Josh Wegger. I'm with the Indiana, Illinois, Iowa Foundation for Fair Contracting. I visited you recently, so uh, I've seen most of you before, but maybe some of you I uh, haven't met yet. It's a pleasure to be with you. I appreciate your time, and I'll only take a few minutes uh, of it. I'm here just to um, uh, represent uh, on behalf of the construction industry and the development industry that we support the continued redevelopment of the uh, old courthouse. And... Um, you know, I understand the, the issues with the, you know, the desire to reduce and reuse and, and, you know, do historic preservation. I understand all that. But, you know, there, we've got the, the legal interpretation from the state's attorney, and th despite what, you know, neat ideas we could come up with, you can't do the vast majority of them. I mean, there's very limited opportunities to work with that property. So... I think it's probably time to face the music on that. Um, again, we can have big dreams and, and neat ideas, but you know we can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. And the county board and the county government has made a plan uh, to demolish the facility. And that plan has been put in place a couple, three, four years ago. Again, you can't put the toothpaste back in the tube. Neat ideas for creative things you can do with land and property but most of those simply cannot be done legally. So I think it's time to face the music. Move forward, whether we like it or not, love it or not, demolishing an old building. I think our hands are tied. Time to face the music, time to move forward, look for creative public use ways to use the property. Again, I mean, I could think of a lot of cool ideas, but they're not legal. And maybe, oh, we, could we pass a bill in Springfield and make those dreams legal? Maybe, but probably not. Pro probably not. So again, maybe not the news that some of you would want to hear, but sometimes we just have to, again, I'll keep saying it, face the music, face the reality, 
move forward. You've, you, you've made the plan to demolish the building and uh, make the best of a bad situation. Again, I'm Josh Weger, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa Foundation for Fair Contracting, and uh, thanks for giving me a moment of your time. State your name. Good morning. My name is Mark Pavlis, and I represent Labor's International Union, Local 75. We cover Will and Grundy County, but today I'm here to echo uh, Tom White's and Josh Wigger's comments uh, about the old courthouse. The, the new courthouse is a state-of-the-art building, and it was uh, built over the last three years with public funds, um, employed a lot of our local and um, some people from Indiana, but mostly all local hardworking families. It was a union project, but that's really not why I'm here today. I'm here to go uh, try and drum up support for the demolition of the old building. It's, uh, to my knowledge, not on a historical preservation society list as of yet. Um, maybe it could be on the Route 66 list of uh, the Rock and Roll Museum and the Gemini Giant and uh, the monstrosity of the mothership that it looks aesthetically, the unloveliness of the building, I think stands out jutting from the ground in the shadow of the new building. Um, I think it's time to consider tearing it down so that we hopefully can have that open land space for the rain gardens, the sensory gardens, the bee pollination gardens, educational facilities, use it publicly, but use it smartly. And the way it stands now, it's, uh, right now, Joliet has an ironclad 15-yard dumpster in its downtown driveway. So I would uh, remind you all at the board that the power is in your hands to go forward and do what's right with the demolition. Thank you. Thank you. I don't think we see any other public comment. All right, so we are going to move on to county board member. Yes, sir. Oh. You can. You're going to have a time. You're going to have a county board member comment right now. So, are there any comments by the county board? Dan Butler, you get to go first. <laughs> go. <laughs> no, you're not. Please, Dan, just make your comment. Oh my God. Make, this is your time. Your, make your comments, sir. You're on the board at this time. Mm -hmm. There is a special time carved out for county board members. You can comment on any topic you should speak during the time period set for county board members, which is now. <laughs> Hold on, you the, There you go. There's a lot of talk back and forth about this uh, building, and I believe for all the unions that are here, they would still benefit from the building if it was to be rehabbed, and it doesn't necessarily have to be demolished. So as far as the workers are going, they're both going to get work. They're going to get work either way. My next comment, because uh, I'm kind of trying to rush it here, as far as the committee that goes down uh, state, uh, as a committeeman, um, I probably could cover my area in roughly a week uh, uh, as a precinct committeeman. Um, as a board member, I could spend four or five months and maybe reach five or ten percent of my population personally by walking. A as a um, uh, countywide, it's almost not even possible to, to win an election by walking and meeting people personally. So what I'm getting at is there is a level of intimacy uh, that goes with the different levels of government. And uh, just speaking to my district's concern about uh, this airport, which many people do not like, I know I personally have reached out to 20 senators, okay, and I have gotten a response from two. And senators aren't easy to reach because they don't really give you email addresses on any of the sites. You kind of kind of hunt it down and maybe go to their website and you can put your, fill your, all your information in on that comment. So going down 
to Springfield and making personal connections is very effective. And I feel it's very important for people of this board to remember that we do represent the people. And those senators or House of Representative people, while it is their job, they need to hear from the people that are a little closer from the people they represent so that they can actually hear a more accurate description of what they want. So I think it's very important. I think it's a great program. Thank you. Thank you. No more county board members. We're going to move on. Oh, yeah. Just press your button. Because like I said, when you're ready to talk, just press your button. Yep. Um, hey, everybody. So uh, I'm District 8, so Plainfield. Uh, we had a constituent come forward with uh, an issue um, where they uh, they wanted to put a garage on their property. It was an elderly couple. Uh, they came to county board member Freeman and myself. Uh, it, it got to us because when they reached out for their permits for this garage, uh, land use informed them that their property was in violation of the State Platt Act and they would need a Platt Act exemption. Um, however, this Platt Act exemption and, and filing of the form would cost them $1,250. Um, so essentially, they're being asked to pay uh, this $1,250 to file this form because their property is not in compliance. The one issue is that they were not involved with the initial um, action that made their property not in compliance. So County Board Member Freeman and I, Freeman and I have been working on this issue. Um, we are trying to get it before the board, but we want to know how our board members would uh, vote on this matter if we came to us to waive the fee for the $1,250. I know I've talked to many uh, of you individually, and I know Micah has talked to her uh, caucus individually. So uh, we just want you to be aware that this is going to be coming in the coming months. We hope to get a solution to it. So um, like earlier today, when one of our county board members spoke out against an issue in their own district, we hope that you uh, follow our lead on this and uh, you know, support waiving this fee for the Platt Act exemption. Thank you very much, and uh, happy to answer any questions offline if you have them. Thank you. County Board Member Diaz. Oh, you turned yourself off. There you go. It's on. Hi, I'd like to thank uh, staff and the executive committee for the great work they did this morning and late last night on getting the ARPA money out for the great citizens of this wonderful county. I know that the people need the money. I know it's not a check. It's they have to spend the money and then get a reimbursement. But thank you so much for getting this done. I appreciate it. And I'm sure so do many of our constituents. Again, thank you. Okay. Doesn't look like we have any more comments from board members. We'll move on to uh, leadership. County board member Turner, have anything? Thank you. Yes, uh, it was great that we had <coughs> the EMA folks in today um, to thank them for their volunteer work. This is National Volunteer Week, at least in Illinois. Um, we have great volunteers at our Forest Preserve and uh, so many in my own local food pantry. So we're very fortunate to get all this free labor, uh, which is great. Earth Day coming up Saturday. Uh, our brand new forest preserve at Hidden Oaks in Bolingbrook is having a celebration. I want to urge folks to either go there or go somewhere and enjoy Earth Day. Very important. I do want to say, I don't oppose the airport. I don't support the airport. I don't really have a position on the airport. But as was stated in the meeting, if it's going to impact our taxpayers, we need to speak out in any way we can and, and get a voice at the table. When I was down in Springfield, I talked with Doug Pryor, the CED. I talked with uh, a couple of other people. And they said, you know, there's this bill about moving forward, but it isn't going anywhere. But even though it's not going anywhere, we really need to refine and hone in our, our position. So I would encourage the legislative committee uh, and our, our leadership team to really sit down and dig into this issue and work with all of our board members to come up with something very, very comprehensive on that. Uh, as for the redevelopment of the courthouse, I was kind of surprised to see labor here supporting the demolition. Um, those are short-term do dollars for labor to demolish the courthouse. It's going to be many, 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 many years before we come up 
with the large amount of money that it would take to build a new courthouse. Um, I was one of those people that was here when we started all this infrastructure and um, some of the board members that were around to listen to me that are still here today, my refrain at every meeting was, I want a new driveway, darn it, but I don't have any money to pay for it. So it's nice to talk about the fact that I'd like a new driveway, but until we sit down and figure out at home where my money's coming from to pay for it, I ain't getting it. And to leave that lot vacant for 10 years to me seems irresponsible. Um, if there are some options on the table, I'd like to see us cover them. And I know Judy's going to say something in total opposition to me, and that's okay. Uh, we don't always agree, but we like to move forward. And um, sitting there with that lot empty for 10 years just doesn't sound like a good idea to me. So if we have some ideas, I'd definitely like to move forward. And to respond to the public defenders, um, I don't believe we have a role in that process. That's the chief judge. Um, perhaps all of us need to start lobbying the chief judge. Uh, <laughs> and just last, I would say that um, our correctional officers should not make more than our public defenders. That's embarrassing. So that's it. Thank you. Uh, County Board, or yeah, Leader Balich. Thank God we're all alive, right? It's a good day today. I just want everyone to know that next month we're going to start the long-awaited landfill committee. How about that, guys? It only took about four months, but what the hell. Well, we're going to get it rolling, and we're going to do a good job because we're running out of room in that landfill. And our attorney, the guy that's currently there, uh, Chuck Helston, said that we should have did it a long time ago. So we're doing what the existing people even say we should do. So that's a good thing. But the other thing that I want, it's like an important item that never gets talked about except once. And it's a real bad problem. You know, we, had, we just went through an election, and I haven't heard anything yet, but I guarantee you in another week or two, you'll hear the Democrat side that lost bitching that the election was cheated, and you'll hear the Republican side saying somebody cheated. It's going to happen. But the bottom line is, I don't, I don't see anything corrupt or crooked with the way Lauren does the election. But we do, have, we do have a serious problem with our elections. And it affects every single person in this room, everybody that lives here. The machines that she uses are garbage. They're absolutely junk. So when something goes wrong and they say, Lauren don't know what the hell she's doing. Well, she's working with something that's antiquated and doesn't work. So she's got to figure out solutions, like a Band-Aid approach. And that's not a way to run an election. Because if you lose an election and it's real close, you're saying, how the hell did I lose? If it's overwhelming, okay, you lost. But there's a lot of close elections. And is it Lauren allowing cheating? Or is it the machines not doing stuff right? No, I'm going with the machines. And it's our job at the county board to have good government. You know, like with the courthouse, I agree with those union guys. Get rid of the thing. It's costing us money every day it's there. But what are we going to do to help Lauren? I'm on this ARPA crap, and I tell you what, that's right, Matt, it is crap. You give money to a, a, a babysitting joint to remodel their house, to have babysitting. You go through all the list on this stuff, and the most important thing we got in front of us is an election, and we don't address it. And I'm told that we can't take the money from ARPA for Who says we can't? Who says we can't? Now, Mary, you're a sweetheart. You, you, you're not going to have to answer it, but if you said no, I'd say, okay, we're going to do it anyway. Tell them to take us to court. Take us to court and sue us. You know what? Who's going to sue the county for taking ARPA money to fix an election so it goes the right way? 
Who's going to take us to court? So we should just say to hell with you. If there's some kind of a law, don't obey it because it's a detriment to our county and we got all that money. We're giving it to everybody in the world that don't need it. Except them. For, how many people does the babysitting place help? Five, 20, 50? That, uh, the mental health people that just come, thank God they're going to get money. But how many people are getting help? 200? The original application said 500. Okay, how many people are in Will County? How many people are affected by elections? So what's more important? Helping Lauren get the right equipment so we don't look like a bunch of Jadrews, that's an empty-headed cucumber? I mean, we got we to gotta get this straight. And I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to let this go. We got to get this fixed. And if we don't, shame on us. The county clerk's office does do a very good job. And they had a very successful election. County board, our chair, Ogala. Sometimes no. speaking last is just so hard, isn't it? <laughs> I do want to thank staff for all the hard work that they have done <coughs> in helping leadership get to the point where we were able to bring the health pillar forward today with an agreed upon uh, allocation of funds to the participants, the applicants who qualified to receive those dollars. I'm glad we didn't have to wait an extra month. For all of you who supported that, thank you so much. That, that was a lot of hours. I can tell you, Steve and Jackie and I spend too much time talking together, and um, <clears throat> we spend time in leadership with Jennifer as well, and it's, it's a lot of time that we spend. So. I'm glad we're able to move forward. I'm hoping economic pillar goes a lot better. I think that it will. It's, it's a little more concise. So that's, that's positive for us. I also want to say that it, it is really difficult. <clears throat> to, the type of government that we have, the executive form of government, makes it difficult for us because we as a board are a unique entity. We're the legislative body, we make the decisions. We're held accountable for a lot of things. The executive gets to administer those decisions and implement the policies and procedures that we put forward. We need to keep that in our mind. We also need to remember that it's very important for us to let Springfield know how we as a board feel about certain legislation. It can't be in the state legislative agenda because it's not going to be specific. And when specific things impact the county, we see it's going to be a negative impact to us financially or if it's something positive that we want them to know, hey, yeah, we really want this. It's very important for us to reach out to our legislators and do that. So this was the first time since I've been on that we did that legislative update, and Jackie and I have talked, and Steve, and we will bring things forward one at a time rather than a packet. But the point is, at the time, we went to Springfield with a packet of them. So we had to take each group down together. That's the way we wrote it up. And it doesn't matter if you don't like something in it, you can you cannot vote for it or you can support it, whatever you like. But if we take the position that we're not going to do anything, there are legislators don't know what we how we feel about this. They're going to be here only from the lobbyists, right? All the lobbyists who are for or against whatever the bill is, and we represent the people here in Will County. And that's what we have to do. We have to make sure that they are represented. We're not always going to agree on our opinion, as you saw by the votes today, and that's okay. We expect that to happen all the time. As chair of this board, I have worked really hard to make sure that we work collectively as a group to be fair to both the Republican caucus and the Democrat caucus. I feel that we've done that rather well. I hope that we continue to look to move forward with this. I do also want everyone to remember when we have legislation that impacts the county board, it truly impacts the county board. Not just this board, but all boards going forward. We need to be very careful when we look at legislation to make sure that we protect the powers and the abilities of what we can do at the county board. <clears throat> so in closing, I would just like to say um, thank you to everyone who did take the trip to Springfield. It was a long, lots of sore feet by the end of the day. Um, we will be looking at sending some more people down for another legislative lobby day because I do think it's very beneficial. Okay. And I do think it's very beneficial for us to do that. And I think it's very important for us to make sure that 
we all have a conversation about it. And, and having that conversation here was good, so everyone got to hear it, because not everyone can make every single committee. So sometimes maybe we do something a little bit different here at county board, but that way everyone gets to hear the conversation that goes on. <clears throat> I want to thank my, my um, chief of staff, Kim, who always goes out on the limb to protect us here, our county board members. And then I would also just like to ask that going forward that the county executive does not continue to speak negatively and call my county board staff, chief of staff, out at meetings and then make accusations of what she might be doing. Also make accusations of me possibly getting a gotcha, a gotcha moment. I think a lot of you here have worked with me for a long time. Jackie has. She knows how I am. I'm not in for any gotcha moment. I'm in for doing what's right, for being responsible for the people. That's not how my mind thinks. I don't look at a list of candidates and say, I don't like these people over here because they wear green hats. I look at it in a fair and unbiased way. And that is how I operate. That's how I always will operate. And I will always be truthful to everybody when they ask me. That is how I operate. So um, I just want to make those statements. and. Um, Thank you, everybody, for all the work that you've done this month. It was a hard month. At least for me, it was a hard month. I know for Jackie, it was a hard month. Steve, it was a hard month. I'm sure it was a hard month for Jennifer. Lauren, you had an election. We know it was a hard month for you. Um, thank you, and enjoy your weekend. I need a motion to go into the executive session. Motion by Mueller. Seconded by Freeman. Madam Clerk, please call. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, yeah. Uh, I need a motion to go into executive section for for negotiations and pending litigation. So we had a motion. We had a second. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Balich. Trainier. Trainier. Yes. Dean Schlotman. Yes. Van Dyne. Yes. Pretzel. Yes. Butler. Yes. Newquist. Yes. Richmond. Yes. Parker. Yes. Williams. Yes. Williams. Coleman, gone. Logan, yes. Freeman, Freeman, yes. Revis, yes. Mitchell, yes. Ortiz, yes. Berkowitz, yes. Mueller, yes. Costa, yes. Diaz, yes. Costa, Ogala. Yes. Thank you.